For years, my favorite game has always been the same controversial pick. A game most people find mediocre or extremely disappointing. A game that, if it weren't for its extremely enthusiastic modding scene, would be completely irrelevant by today. That game is Fallout 4. But I don't like Fallout 4 because it's a Fallout. And while its post-apocalyptic atmosphere is very appealing to me, there are countless other games set in the post-apocalypse that are more original, deep, and atmospheric than Fallout 4 could ever be. The reason I love Fallout 4 is because of one character that does an amazing job at one simple thing. Portraying an addict. Many games feature characters who use substances. Max Payne, for example, is an ex-NYPD detective who got hooked on booze and painkillers after a tragic event where his family was killed by drug addicts. Always seen with a glass and popping Percocets in cutscenes, it's clear that Max is almost constantly high or drunk. However, this fact is rare ever implemented in gameplay. And while his story is realistic, it's far from relatable. Kate in Fallout 4 is much different. Kate is a character that I've been invested in for a very long time, popping up in my mind long after I stopped playing Fallout 4. Her struggles with addiction are not only seen in gameplay, but also reflect into her personality, making her, in my eyes, an exceptional depiction of someone suffering from addiction, right down to the causes, to the minor details. She's lived a life filled with misery around every corner, a life tainted by trauma and misfortune. Addiction has ingrained itself into every aspect of her character and mindset in a way that no other piece of media has ever come close to matching. And it's for this reason that I feel the need to talk about her. Her story and her reliance on substances, as it will not only explain the real world effects drugs have on people, but also the causes of addiction in the first place. So if you'll allow me, I'd like to talk to you about Kate, leaving no detail unmentioned and no piece of dialogue unanalyzed. This is a video I've been wanting to make for years, and it will undoubtedly be the longest video I have ever made. This is the most accurate depiction of an addict in video games. Like with many quests in the game, our story starts in Diamond City. Fresh out of the vault, seeing your wife get game ended, you'll be directed to the safe haven smack dab in the middle of Boston, after helping some Minutemen avoid getting clapped by raiders. Punching Piper to skip the cuts scene and make our way inside, we'll inevitably walk past one of these guys, Diamond City Security, who as the name implies, are responsible for keeping the city secure by keeping out raiders, super mutants, wildlife, and even ghouls. And if that sounds like an ethno state, that's because it is, smooth skin. Anyways, by interacting with any of the guards, we can hear about some rumors surrounding the wasteland, one of which being about a place called the Combat Zone, a raider exclusive fight club where spectators can watch two people battle to death for entertainment. Immediately upon entering the zone, we start to understand what type of establishment this is. To the left, we see rule breakers. People who have either 1. Fought outside the cage, 2. Snuck in without paying a fee, or 3. Begged or loaded around the zone, too long for comfort. Upon opening the door directly in front of us, we can see raiders cheering on a fight happening between two people. A nameless raider and Kate. The entire reason I'm making this video in the first place. Once we interrupt or walk in, all raiders immediately turn hostile and Kate finishes the fight. Upon stomping out the raiders' heads onto the walls with our power fist, we get to talking with the announcer, Tommy, and the headliner, Kate. Is it over? Well, that could have gone worse. <laughs> I dunno. Seemed quite the performance from where I was standing. Are you f***ing high or something? Why am I asking? Of course you are. Was still winning the fight, wasn't I? You're strung out and getting sloppy is what you are. Of course, I suppose you ain't got to worry about that now. Seems this one just put us out of business. I'm not sure if I should kiss you or have my little bird here feed you your own entrails. I told you to quit calling me that. We can also inquire further into the combat zone in case we forgot why we're here. What is this place? Not from around here, huh? This is the combat zone. Finest arena in the Commonwealth. Kate, here's the headline. A hundred plus matches undefeated. We used to serve a more legit clientele. But about two years ago, a gang of raiders rolled in and we became a more... exclusive establishment. Up until you took our entire client base out of the gene pool and put us out of business, that is. Out of business? What do you mean? Not the entrepreneurial sort, are ya? Keeping those idiots entertained was what kept us in caps. Now just what the hell are we supposed to do? To hell with them! Moral come! Just need a quick breather and I'll be ready to go. Oh, breather? What? So you can slam more of that junk into your arm now? No, you know what? 
I think this was a blessing in disguise. Now with no more raiders to bring in camps, Tommy finds himself in a predicament. You caught the end of that bout. What'd you think of Kate's work? Not sure. I didn't catch the whole thing. Yeah, I guess you were pretty busy cleaning house. Impressive work. Makes me think you're good enough to do me a favor. So here's my predicament. I suddenly got no audience. No audience means I got no caps coming in. And if you ain't bringing in caps, little bird, you ain't an asset. You're a liability. To me, and to yourself. So, here's what I'm thinking. What say I let you take over her contract? She goes with you, watches your back. Look, you'd be doing me a favor while I try to get the place back in order. What do you say? Me? And him? Asking you to take over Kate's contract for financial reasons, as she serves no more purpose in the combat zone. After passing a charisma check, however, we're able to find out the real reason Tommy wants Kate gone. Why would you want her to go with me? Yeah, Tommy. Just why the hell are you trying to get rid of me? <sighs> Look, truth is, all that junk, it's been making you careless. And I don't want to be the one doing color commentary when you finally hit the floor. Alright? So just do me this favor. Both of you. Please. Tommy does indeed care about Kate. Enough to want her to get clean from the junk she slamming into her arm, and enough not to want to be there when Kate loses a fight and suffers the consequences. Sure. I could use someone watching my back. Good. It's settled then. And here, take this. It's the purse from the last fight. Exterminator's feet. Now just wait a second. What exactly are you gonna do without me here? You don't need to worry about me. I'll get this place set up right. Maybe find a less blood-soaked clientele. Now get the hell out of here. You ain't welcome anymore, little bird. You're a real son of a bitch. You know that, Tommy? You don't have to tell me. Seeing as how Kate seems to be a competent fighter, we agreed to take over her contract and travel with us. This is not what was originally planned, however. The combat zone was supposed to be an interactable combat arena where you could fight enemies for a good amount of camps. However, this idea ended up falling apart for whatever reason. Luckily for us, the mod Combat Zone Restored by Barbarica lets us explore what the combat zone was meant to be, as well as the initially intended voice lines for Kate and Tommy. In the cut version, Tommy would invite the player to fight against Kate, after which you'd go into the basement and be lifted up into the cage. Defeating Kate in a fight, we get one of the most interesting pieces of cut dialogue. Quit standing there and finish it already. The hell are you waiting for? What's the matter with you? Everything's the matter with me. Just forget it. Kate asks us to finish it by killing her. Through this cut dialogue, we learn that Kate is suicidal far before the idolization dialogue discussed later. Shortly after, Tommy asks to speak with you, where we can see Kate's far more arrogant and rebellious attitude on full display. Oh, so, new blood, what'd you think of that? <laughs> Too easy. You said she's one of your best? Too easy, eh? How about we have a little rematch when I'm not all worn out from fighting the idiots that stumbled into the arena before you? You lost that all on your own. You strung out and getting sloppy. You need to curb the cameras, darling. I'm not your darling. Some interesting changes that we can observe is that Kate willingly goes with the player instead of being forced to. You know what? Fine. I'm done. I give Tommy a week before he starts missing my sweet arse. When are we leaving, hotshot? Past this, the dialogue with Kate mostly stays the same. While stripping the combat zone of any useful items, you may come across a med station with a lock on it, to which Kate will promptly ask the player if they want help opening that lock, as she quote is used to getting into places I'm not wanted is a talent I've acquired over the years. This explains to the player that Kate is a master locksmith, capable of lockpicking any lock no matter the difficulty, provided with enough bobby pins of course. Furthermore, Kate will be impressed by the player if they manage to unlock the door by themselves, raising her affinity level. Affinity is a very important gameplay mechanic in Fallout 4. Reaching max affinity with a companion will give you their perk, which will permanently boost the player, as well as revealing hidden dialogue that explains more about the companion's past. There are seven stages of affinity. Hatred, where a companion refuses to travel with you after multiple warnings and negative events. Disdain, where a companion will start to warn and criticize your actions. Neutral 
which is, as the name implies, friend, where the companion will start to open up about the past, admiration, where the companion will explain even more personal details about themselves, confident, where the companion will give the player important quests that will help the player reach max affinity, and idolization, where the companion is in love with the player and will do the sags, as well as acquiring their perk, of course. Different companions will raise their affinity based on the player's actions. Piper likes it when you help innocents and avoid violence. Strong, a super mutant, likes cannibalism and shitting on non-mutant beta cucks. Don't be such a coward. I'm not a coward. Not coward? Then fight. Preston Garvey likes weapon customization and sarcasm, and Kate generally likes being a fucking asshole to people. Nuka-Cola. Drink some. Water. Ha! Nice one. Seriously, I, I genuinely believe that if the game let you go around kicking pregnant women in the stomach, she'd be right there with you, laced up, ready to go. But if throwing Molotovs into orphanages and making fun of poor people isn't quite your style, there are luckily also many other ways of getting Kate to like you. Shredding around naked and drinking hard liquor such as whiskey will raise your affinity with her quite rapidly, short of lockpicking and pickpocketing. Once the player has sufficiently been enough of an asshole or gotten sloppy drunk from too much vodka every night, Kate will confront the player to, in her eyes, ask for the check. I'd really like to talk to you. You ready now? Is something wrong? I don't know. You tell me. After Tommy stuck me with you, I was expecting to hate your guts. Not only because you agreed to pick up me contract, but because I was waiting for you to order me around like hired help. Now so far, you've been treating me like a friend. Hell, you've been damn near nice to me. Now I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but your kindness is starting to make me wonder. If there's anything I learned in the combat zone, it was that nobody does things for other people without expecting something in return. Kate explains that she feels obligated to do you a favor, in return for your kindness. As she states, nobody in the combat zone does something for free. Through this dialogue, we can learn more about the combat zone, where we initially got Kate from in the first place. Surviving the combat zone must have been rough. That's putting it nicely. I spent three years living at the combat zone. Smelled like puke and piss. But I called it home. I was making a few caps. Had me own bed to sleep in and three hot meals a day. Then the raiders took over the place. You know that lot. They aren't exactly what you'd call the gentle type. After they moved in, if you didn't keep looking over your shoulder, you were liable to get sucker punched or robbed. Or worse. Didn't take me long to learn that I had to put my hard-earned caps to good use. Buying friends was essential to making life easy. So, I guess I'm waiting for you to hand me a bill. You know what I mean? According to her, the beginning of the combat zone was a rather good job to have in the wasteland, affording her a bed to sleep in and enough caps to eat three meals a day. However, once raiders moved in, the combat zone became more and more bloody. Not only did the raiders harass each other and the fighters, but they would also demand that each fight be made a fight to the death. To survive in this environment, Kate was forced to buy friends who would watch her back in return for a handful of caps. Being used to this, of course, Kate expects no less from the player, who, despite her initial expectations, treated her like a friend so far, making her question your kindness for self-interested investments. Why are you so paranoid about deaths? I really don't want to talk about it. I'll tell you what, give me some time and I'll think of something I can do to repay you. I'm not a rich girl, but I'm sure we can agree on something. After all, what are friends for? No matter how much you use sarcasm or flat out tell Kate that we expect nothing in return, she will always insist on finding some way to repay you. The post-nuclear commonwealth is a cruel place. Survival is the exception, not the expectation out here. Raiders, gunners, mutants, secret societies like the Institute have turned its inhabitants from understanding to paranoid. Kate is one of these inhabitants. Like many, she does not believe in pure kindness, as she's never experienced it herself, something we learn a lot more about in our next conversation with her. Like with many other companions, Kate will speak up about her surroundings in certain areas, making references to things and experiences she's had. One great example of these hidden voice lines can be found when the player goes near the Tarberry farm in a settlement called the Slog. They used to make an amazing drink with Tarberries at the combat zone. Tasted awful. 
but would knock you out after a few sips. Stating that tar berries were used to distill a very strong liquor at the combat zone, at the cost of its taste. Unfortunately, most of these voice lines are hidden in the official release of the game. However, there is an incredible mod made by a user called Thuggy Smurf on the Nexus that adds in these lines and even allows the player to ask about them in expanded dialogue. As you may have noticed, Kate is a stereotypical depiction of a tough Irish girl, drinking loads, fighting often, and a yee yee ass haircut to boot. However, her accent is not quite Irish. If you've ever been to Ireland or had the displeasure of asking why the fuck Ireland is split in two, then you'd be able to pick up on the differences between a freedom-loving American and a Guinness drinking ginger. But yeah, Kate's accent is anything but authentically Irish, as her voice actress Kate Townsend, holy f that's an English name, was born in Glasgow, not Dublin. And while she does an incredible job at vocalizing emotions through this character, she has drawn several complaints from Irish Fallout fans for her filthy Scottish pronunciations, such as Molotov cocktail instead of the things we throw at police. Now lore-wise, Kate is thought to be born in the US and simply picked up the accent through her parents who were Irish. Something we find out a lot more about in Kate's next reveal dialogue. Kate starts by expressing her desire to tell you about herself after she considers you the very first person she can trust. Have time to talk now. Still have something important to say. Go on. I'm not sure how to put this. We've been on the road together for a while. And we've taken some hard knocks. But through all that crap, I notice you've always been sticking by me. You know, watching me back and making sure I don't do anything stupid. I think maybe it's time to tell you a little bit about who you're traveling with. There's no reason for us to keep acting like we're strangers. Kate goes on to explain that she's had a very rough upbringing. Born into a family which did not love her, quite the opposite in fact. I appreciate your trust. Well, you're the first to earn it. It all starts with two ways of humanity I suppose you could call me parents. I'm convinced I was a mistake, because I can't remember a single moment that they treated me like their daughter. I was yelled at and beaten. Everything I did was wrong. Nothing but a nuisance in their eyes. The whole time I was telling myself that they had to love me, even if it was just the tiniest bit, because they never kicked me out. Then me 18th birthday arrived, and I found out why they kept me around. They slapped a shock collar around me neck and sold me to slavers. They didn't even care enough about me to say goodbye. Eighteen years of suffering through that shite, and all I was worth to them was a pocket full of caps. Stating that she felt like a nuisance to her parents. Someone who wasn't worth their time, attention, or love. However, she convinced herself that they did indeed care about her as she was kept healthy and fed, only to have her convictions shattered as soon as she turned 18, sold to slavers for a meager 300 camps, without saying a word or even a goodbye. Puzzled by the fact that Kate chose to stay with her parents, you can ask Kate why she didn't run away, which in fact, she did try. Why didn't you run away? I tried. Twice. The first time I did it, they locked me in a shed outside of the house we lived in. The second time. They broke one of my legs. Kate tried to escape her abusive family two times. The first time, they locked her outside in an unheated shed overnight. The second time, her father broke one of her legs, so she could never run away ever again. Luckily for Kate, she seems to have recovered in spite of the lack of medical assistance, running around without much of a limp. The next few years proved to be the most impactful years of her life, and the toughest. Life can be harsh. You don't know the half of it. It would be easy to blame me charming personality on me parents, but they didn't make me this way. I did. I was with those slavers for five years. Roughest five of me goddamn life. The things they made me do. The way they used me for their amusement. It sickens me to me stomach even thinking about it. But I bided me time and learned to use their own methods against them. Stealing a few caps out of a sleeping man's pocket is a piece of cake. As long as you don't get greedy. Kate being a slave, bound by an explosive slave collar strapped to her neck, was further abused by her owners for their amusement. Unluckily for them, Kate was far more resourceful than they gave her credit for, learning several new tricks such as lockpicking and pickpocketing in order to slowly build up a supply of camps. I can't believe you tolerated that. I would have killed them all. That's easy for you to say. You weren't there. You have no idea what I went through. It took every ounce of patience I had. But after five years, I had finally pocketed enough to buy me own way out of there. 
But instead of heading off to try and repair the shambles of me life, I gave in to me rage and I headed home. You can imagine the look on me parents' faces when I kicked open their door. What you can't imagine is what they looked like after. After I emptied me gun into them. Over the course of five years, Kate had accumulated enough stolen caps to pay someone to remove the slave collar from her neck, freeing her from the explosive consequences of disobeying her captors. Suffering through a non-stop barrage of misery-induced trauma for 23 years, Kate only had two people to blame, the parents. For selling her into slavery, for breaking her leg, for neglecting her, for treating her like she was subhuman, and for never showing any resistance semblance of remorse for their actions. Kate would travel back home to get revenge. Filled with rage and armed with a handgun, once she found them, everyone in the room saw the bloody writing on the wall. Kate justifiably killed both of her parents by shooting them to death. An act Kate can't seem to forget. An act that no matter how strong the dosage, she can't seem to wash away. Particularly the images of their faces on their corpses. You did what you had to do. Did I? When I closed my eyes, all I can see is their faces twisted with fear. And then my mind starts wandering and I start judging myself. And it's ripping me the fuck apart. You think I inject myself with all that shit? I didn't drink myself drunk because I'm a tough Irish girl. I do it so I can forget and move on with my miserable life. So there you are. The entire flawed package known as Kate. Stripped bare for your perusal. This is the reason Kate injects herself with drugs and drinks herself drunk. As many addicts do, she tries to wash away the misery with a heavy dose of drugs and a bottle of liquor. The memories of her actions stabbing her heart like a needle anytime she remembers them, rendering her unable to have a good time until she's too drunk or high to care. Why judge yourself? My parents sold me into slavery, but did they deserve to die for it? Yeah, I took some hard knocks as I was growing up. But they fed me and kept me from glowing with rats. This is the kind of crap that starts me mind wandering and drives me literally to drink. I guess I'm just waiting to hear what you think of me now. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, Kate meets all the criteria from someone suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, aka PTSD, a condition in which a patient suffers from severe anxiety and stress long after a traumatic event has occurred, typically in the form of a flashback. According to the American Addiction Centers, people suffering from PTSD are 14 times more likely to become addicted to drugs, something we see very well represented in Kate's habits. Untreated mental illness is the biggest burden one can carry, one so heavy it has broken Kate, to the point where she relies on substances to escape her problems and temporarily feel happy. This is why I believe Kate is the best representation of an addict, but what she's addicted to is still unknown. Kate will make several comments about her drug use, casually stating that she should lower the dosage of whatever it is she's slamming into her veins. I gotta lower the dosage. It seems that Kate takes this drug every day, something we'll find out more about in our next piece of dialogue. For now, we have a choice to make. We can either tell Kate that 1. We are disappointed in her, 2. Reassure her that we won't leave her, or 3. Tell her that you're proud of her and how far she has come. And no matter how much I try, I can never bring myself to choose anything but option 3. I'm proud of you. I knew I was taking a chance telling you all this, but I never expected you to say you were proud of me. I... I, I think I needed to hear that from you. Thank you. After that conversation, Kate will be in much higher spirits, generally sounding happier and less afraid when talking to you. Another thing the Settler and Companion Dialogue Overhaul mod adds back into the game are companion-given quests. Quests that the player can turn in for a large boost in the companion's affinity for the player. Kate's quests naturally center around going to raid her hideouts and killing everyone inside. This is likely due to her experiences in the combat zone and the slavers who are likely affiliated with raiders, if not being raiders themselves. Upon completion, Kate will thank the player and gift them a small reward. Another mod I use has probably been staring you in the face since you started watching this video. Kate in Fallout 4 does not look like this. Vanilla Kate is not bruised, scarred, or sleep deprived in normal Fallout 4. So I decided to download a mod that more accurately represents who she is. Addict Kate 
is a mod made by Gingerbread Girl, who posted this one project and then never returned again. Despite their inexperience, I think they did a fantastic job of portraying the physical aspects of drug dependency, and seeing how Kate is a former cage fighter added some additional bruising to represent her love for brawling. Addicts do not have time to put on makeup. Addicts do not look like they've gotten 8 hours of sleep. I think that the developers knew this, but stayed away from adding scars or bruising as it might be too unappealing to players. Either way, the mod does a great job of working her addiction back into her appearance, which up until now didn't seem like too big of an issue. When out of the blue, Kate has a confession. I never thought I'd be saying this, but I... Well, I really need your help. What's the matter, Kate? Everything is the matter. We're friends now, which means I can trust you with anything. I'm also hoping it means you've got me back, because I need it now more than ever. I'm... I'm sick. And I don't think I can hide it from you anymore. How are you suffering? You look fine to me. You can't tell because I've been hiding it from you. It's just that... Well, I'm scared, okay? I'm scared that you'll hear the truth and that I'll lose you as a friend. God, I'm making a hell of a mess of this. I didn't think it would be so tough. You'll never lose me as a friend. No matter what you say. Damn you for being so nice to me. I started this, so I suppose I need to finish it. Ever since I left home, I've been using Psycho. Psycho is a powerful chem that makes you kill faster and die slower. Originally made by the US Army in an attempt to give their soldiers an edge, now it is used to enhance combat in the wasteland, most commonly used by raiders. And now, Kate. The closest drug in the real world is one of the most terrifying drugs one can consume. Fencyclidine, otherwise known as <laughs> PCP, like Psycho, is known for its strong dissociative and aggression-inducing properties. According to Wikipedia, it quote, may induce feelings of strength, power, and invulnerability, as well as a numbing effect on the mind. Something that Kate likely found calming during her PTSD-induced flashbacks. Now, it has a complete and utter grip of her. I don't know why I'm still taking that crap, but I can't stop. And believe me, I've tried. I can't even go a day without it anymore, and I'm f***ing sick and tired of it. I've even been doing it behind your back. Sneaking doses when I think you aren't looking. Worst of all, it's been making me sick. I've been spitting blood and I don't feel right inside. I need to get this shit out of me system before I wind up dead. She tried to stop her use multiple times, but has failed every single one. No matter how hard she tries, she could not stop using Psycho every day for the last few years, destroying her body and mind. Whenever she has some of it, she will try to inject the stuff whenever she thinks you're not looking. Can your Psycho addiction be cured? Normally a wasteland doc could handle it, but I've been using the stuff so damn long they can't help me anymore. There's only one other way I know, but it's not going to be easy. Normally, addictions can be cured by a dose of addictol or by a doctor found in the wasteland. However, Kate's situation is far too out of control for that to be an option now. Luckily for us, she's got a backup plan. Kate asks you for a favor. A big favor. There's supposed to be a vault somewhere out here. A place called Vault 95. I've heard that Vault Tech used it for some kind of social experiment. Stuck a bunch of junkies inside to poke and prod. Well, they supposedly had some special method to clean up those blokes in there. Some kind of a machine or something. If we could get inside, maybe that machine could help me. To take her to the bowels of the gunner-occupied Vault 95, and help her reach the extractor chair. No problem. We'll get you there. I can't believe how kind you're being to me, even when I'm letting you down. Look, I don't want you to think I'm some kind of low-life junkie. A stupid girl who's harming herself for no good reason. From one friend to another, all I'm asking is for your help. When you're ready, take me out to Vault 95 and help me put an end to me pain. The place protected by some of the most deadly enemies in the game. Two Assaultrons. After getting my ass clapped two or three times, I figured it was about time to bring out the big guns. With a fully automatic G3 and 308 and a pre-war set of power armor. Now adequately strapped, the enemy got clapped instead. Making our way through the vault, we can see what Kate was talking about when she mentioned the vault being full of junkies. Jet, Psycho, and Medics can be found littering the floors and rooms, surrounded by patients who likely overdosed or killed each other after the bombs fell. Shooting our way past the remaining gunners, we find it. The detox chamber. However, Kate seems to be hesitant. The answer to me problems is sitting in that room. 
but I don't know if I should go through with it. Don't you want to get better? I don't know. Me body's telling me to get it over with. But what if the psycho's the only thing keeping me together? What if this opens me eyes and I don't like what I see? There were reasons I dulled the pain. Things I didn't want to face. Things I was trying to forget. I'd rather be spitting blood than relive in the past. This hesitation is another reason why I find Kate such a well-written character. Many addicts are afraid of sobriety. Commonly, they fear that life will never be as fun or relaxing ever again. Some addicts question their ability to perform without substances. For example, Juice World would write on a song called Wishing Well about how he wouldn't be as successful or as tolerant of stress if he wasn't addicted to Percocet, an addiction that would end up taking his life in 2019. For Kate, the fears of overcoming PTSD without the use of medication like Psycho seems too difficult to bear. Luckily for us, convincing her is as easy as a button press. You're a fighter. Don't give up. You can beat this. Damn it. You're right. Whatever happens, I can handle it on my own. I'm gonna sit in the chair. Whenever you're ready, you go ahead and throw the switch. After years of blocking out the outside world and her emotions, Kate sits down in the chair and prepares to come back to her sober mindset, for better or for worse. Are you alright, Kate? How are you feeling? Strange. I feel really strange. Everything feels... different. Everything feels... clearer. Colors. Sounds. Smells. Nothing is like I remember. I... I can't believe it worked. The cravings. The pain. Hell. Even the rush. They've disappeared. Was I really that far gone? The pain's gone as well? I wouldn't say I'm at me best, but something's changed. That sick feeling, the pain, it's gone from stabbing to dull. I don't know, maybe some of it was in me head. Doesn't matter. I haven't felt this good in a long time. I'm glad you're alright. I was worried about you. Seems you're not the only one. I have a feeling that Tommy had this in mind all along. Clever old bastard kicked me out of the combat zone so I'd clean myself up and somehow knew you'd be up for the challenge. I guess he saw something in you that I missed. Well, yeah. My charming personality. <laughs> something like that. Look, I'm never gonna forget what you did for me today. You stepped up and helped when everyone else cashed out. I know I suck at thank yous, but that's the best you're gonna get out of me. Now how about we get out of here, and leave this place far behind? While I understand that this path of sobriety is far better suited for a video game than a more realistic drug rehabilitation center, I still feel the need to complain. If the extractor chair were made available in real life, I'd guess the world would never have another drug addiction epidemic ever again. There is nothing in this world that can turn someone from a junkie to a sober person in the matter of minutes. The only thing that would even come close are psychedelics and ketamine. Substances that have recently come into the public eye for their ability to treat drug cravings and alter the experience of getting high slash drunk. But even those forms of treatment are in their early stages. So a magical chair that rids an addict of their habits is by far the most unrealistic portrayal of addiction in Kate's story. But I understand why they did it. And considering the amount of subtle details Kate's writers got right, I'm more than happy to give them a pass on this one. From now on, Kate will never use any chem ever again. This also constitutes a change in her personality. Before the intervention, Kate would like it when the player uses chems. After the quest is completed, however, Kate will be unhappy with you if you do the same, rightfully calling you a hypocrite. Completing the quest opens up the affinity cap, which allows you to reach the highest affinity level with Kate, and gaining her perk. This final affinity level is called idolization, allowing you to romance Kate and do the sex, albeit with a rather depressing confession. I'd still like to have that talk. Do you have time now? Go ahead. You're gonna have to bear with me. This isn't easy for me to say, and I want to get it right. <sighs> Where do I begin? Did you know I spent three years fighting at the combat zone? Three years of getting beaten to hell by a bunch of losers and lunatics. After the matches were over, I'd spit out the blood, stitch me wounds, and do a couple of shots of Psycho to keep me going. I f***ing hated it. I hated the crowds, I hated the other fighters, and I hated myself. I never understood why I put myself through all that. Until now. 
It was because I was alone. And I think deep down, I wanted to die. I wanted one of my opponents to crush the life out of me. The easy way out. Kate wasn't fighting in the combat zone for the warm bed and hot meals. Kate was fighting in the combat zone in the hopes of being killed, putting her out of her misery. I understand. I don't think I'm being clear with you. I've never been good with these things. My life's been nothing but one huge failure after another. You've heard all my stories, and you know the prices I've paid. There were a few times when things got really bad that I... I found myself staring down the barrel of my own shotgun. I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger. I guess I was praying that I could find a single decent scrap of humanity in this fucked up world. Kate reveals that she's been close to ending it all when she was at her lowest, only to be dissuaded by the hopes of finding another person that could fill the hole in her heart. And then, what you did for me back there at Vault 95, it was like the answer to those prayers. That's the first time in me life I fully depended on someone else, and they didn't let me down. God damn it, I'm making a mess of this. You're not messing anything up. You're doing just fine. I'm trying to hold it together. Maybe I should just get to the point. The longer we've been spending time together, the more I'm beginning to realize what you mean to me. And I'm not just talking about you watching me back or sharing a drink together. I mean more than that. Before we met, I'd never let me guard down around anyone. I didn't dare. But with you, I feel like I can let you in and see me for everything that I am. For better or for worse. Look, I can't go back to the way things were before we met. I won't. But what I need you to do is look me in the eyes and tell me you feel something too. It is now, after hearing Kate's entire story, after spending a long time not only bonding with her, but also getting her clean from her psycho addiction, that we are faced with an option. A. Confess your love for Kate and romance her. Or B. Reject her and follow life's true meaning. Pussy. I consider us the best of friends, Kate. I wouldn't have it any other way. God damn, it feels good to hear you say that. Well... I guess that's all I had to say for now. Thanks for listening to me nonsense. Feels comforting to have someone like you to talk to. And don't worry. From now on, things only get better from here. I'll still keep the bullets off of you. And drink your sorry arse under the table. What are friends for, eh? Once dedicating yourself to the Church of Femboys and friends owning Kate, she'll accept your boundaries and she'll be glad to have you as a friend, loving the time she spends around you while dropping subtle hints for more in the conversation. Alternatively, if you want the lover's embrace bonus when sleeping with your companion like a beta a straight cuck, you can load up the last quick save and why the fuck is my character doing blackface? You can romance Kate by passing a high charisma check. Of course I do. I'm in love with you, Kate. You... you're what? You said... you're in love with me. I... I didn't know. I mean, I felt something between us, but I thought it was something else. Why? Why would you fall in love with someone as screwed up as I am? You're special to me, Kate. And I don't think I'd be happier with anyone else. You... you really mean that? This has to be the first time I put all my cards on the table and didn't end up losing everything. You don't know how much this means to me, to have someone special in my life. I promise you, I mean to make the most of it. Once doing so, Kate will openly flirt with you and making hints at doing the sags. If you're feeling tired, we could always find a bed. And there we have it, Kate's entire story. But there's one more piece of dialogue I want to discuss before I end this video. A piece of dialogue that is scarily accurate and something that I can actually relate to personally. Right after you cure Kate of her psycho addiction, she says this line about the pain she had from the psycho, and she described it as from stabbing to dull. From stabbing to dull is the exact same way that I would explain my thoughts about what I was trying to escape when I was an addict. Now, you know, I don't live a, a sober life. I still vape and I'll roll a blunt if I have it, but from my early teens to the time when I was 19, uh, I was an alcoholic. You know, there there was some shit that I've been through that uh, 
I didn't know how to deal with and uh, drinking was the easiest way to make myself feel better. Now I wasn't sold into slavery or had my legs broken for trying to run away, but I was going through it. Growing up's rough and I thought I could self-medicate the pain away with booze. Uh, I was wrong. Now being clean from my alcohol dependence, uh, I can tell you with confidence that your drug use only exacerbates your trauma and your anxiety and your depression. It only makes it worse. And when you get sober, the things that affect you mentally go from this piercing feeling in your mind to occasionally getting prodded with a dull butter knife. It makes it much easier to handle being sober. Kate helped me understand why I drank by explaining why she did. And it made me realize why I was hitting the bottle. You know, the only thing I, I really understood about it is that if I'm sad, I can have a drink and then I'll be happy. Kate changed that. I still have a distinct memory where I was playing Fallout 4 VR with my uh, HTC Vive. I was doing a quest where you track down Kellogg uh, with dog meat, and uh, I'll actually put up on screen the exact location where this happened. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. You know, at that point, I reached the affinity level where Kate starts to tell you about herself, and after hearing her story, uh, I could feel the inside of my VR headset getting wet. I was uh, shedding a tear. No other game has made me felt that way. You know, there are some video games out there that have um, had a, a very big emotional impact on me, uh, which I'm probably gonna cover at some point. But um, yeah, Kate's the only one uh, which made me cry. And uh, that's why I wanted to make this video. And if you're an addict watching this and you can relate to Kate like I did, uh, I'd encourage you to give sobriety a try. It's far less painful and far more relieving than you could ever imagine. And uh, if you have beaten addiction like I have, leave a comment down below uh, telling people what helped you get clean, you know, so the junkies in the audience can use that information to also get clean. Because no matter how broken you feel, it is never too late to pick up the pieces of your life and put it back together. Thanks for watching. It's all over but the cry. And nobody's crying but me. Friends all over know I'm dry to forget about how much I care for you. It's all over but the dreaming. Poor little dreams that keep trying to come true It's all over but the cry And I can't get over crying over